Welcome to the first talk today on Fat Python by Victor Stinner. And with that, welcome here. I'm here to give you the talk. Hi. So hi, my name is uh, Victor Stinner. Uh, I'm currently working for the Red Hat company. I'm working on the OpenStack project. Uh, one part of my work is to port the giant beast called OpenStack to Python 3. Uh, the good news is that I'm always uh, almost done because I ported uh, more than 90% uh, of the projects. So Python 3 is coming. And um, I, I'm also a Python core developer since uh, something like five years or more. And today I'm, I'm here to present you a new project called Fat Python. Uh, first, uh, I will try to explain why Python is slow and why uh, this specific language is more difficult to optimize than some others. Uh, if you would like to say that Python is slow, uh, you, you must compare it to something else. Uh, a, a common um, comparison is to use uh, the C language because Python sometimes is uh, has a, almost the same speed, but in some corner cases, it's up to 20 times uh, slower. And uh, when I say the C language, is um, the C is compiled to machine code, so the code directly is executed by the CPU, uh, compared to Python, which is uh, interpreted. It means that you, you get a byte code, and byte code is executed by the, a virtual machine. Uh, at least for the case of C Python, uh, and you can also compare Python to the JavaScript because JavaScript is also um, a dynamic language uh, as uh, Python. But JavaScript has very, very efficient uh, JIT compilers. Uh, you you can find them in uh, many browsers. And uh, compared to JavaScript, Python is still uh, slower. But uh, we already have a much faster Python implementation of Python. Uh, the most famous one and the most advanced and more stable is uh, PyPy, uh, which is here since uh, something like uh, 10 years. Uh, it's uh, fully compatible with CPython. Uh, it's really fast, like uh, five or 10 times faster than CPython, or sometimes uh, even more, depending on the specific kind of uh, application or your workload. Uh, you have a new project called um, Python, which is uh, sponsored by uh, Dropbox. Uh, it's um, a fork of CPython 2.7 uh, based on uh, LLVM. The, the idea is to keep the compatibility with the C extension, but uh, in some cases try to convert the Python code to machine code, to compile it to machine code. Uh, another project is called uh, Pygeon. It's, it's made by uh, Microsoft. It's a little, bit, a little bit younger than uh, Python. Uh, I think that Python is two years old and Pigeon is one year old. Uh, Pigeon is based on the Microsoft Core CLR. Um, another kind of uh, a project is Numba. Numba is not a full uh, in implementation of Python. It's um, a JIT compiler that you have to annotate your function with something like uh, uh, at uh, uh, JIT to compile it. And it's specialized for numbers. Uh, for example, it's very efficient for NumPy, but it's not a generic um, implementation of Python. You cannot make uh, Django, for example, much faster with Numba. And another common example is uh, Cyton. Uh, Cyton is not really an implementation of Python. It's more a compiler to taking Python source and um, convert the, the code to a, something like a C extension but you can also annotate the type to, to make even more optimization. So if you start to annotate the type, it's no more Python, but it looks very close to Python. So the, the first question is, why do we need a new optimizer? Um, the, the fact is that I'm working on the OpenStack project, and in OpenStack we are still using CPython because it's still the reference implementation. And uh, some people try to use PyPy, but there, there is not enough support in the OpenStack community to fix some uh, simple issues. So, um, uh, um, and about uh, Python from Dropbox, the issue is that they, they started from Python 2, and uh, we are all moving slowly to Python 3. And uh, is, I, I don't plan to support uh, Python 3 right now. 
And Pigeon is still a little bit young. And I'm not sure that uh, Core CLR from Microsoft is really optimized for all platforms like uh, Linux or Mac OS X. So um, I'm trying to, to do my best uh, to make CPython a little bit faster. Uh, another fact is that um, Python is not always faster uh, than CPython. Uh, a common uh, known bottleneck of uh, PyPy is when you use a C extension because um, to support C extension, uh, PyPy has to emulate the, memor the object in memory. You, have to, uh, you need to have two views of the data, the optimized view of PyPy, but the old way to represent data uh, for the C extension. You're, they also have to emulate uh, reference counting and um, other many uh, complex tricks. And because of that, running C extension in, on PyPy is slower. Uh, because PyPy was written from scratch, so they don't have the, f the uh, huge uh, CIPI. Uh, another fact is that uh, CPython remains a reference implementation for new features. Uh, for example, if you compare Python 2.7 on the future, Python 3.6, there is a wide range of new features. Uh, there are maybe 10 or 20 new modules, but also new changes in the syntax like the await and the async keyword, but also the new f string uh, in Python 3.6. So py Python is moving, and it's moving first in the C Python. And uh, sadly, many libraries and uh, applications rely on C Python implementation detail. Uh, I have to put quotes because uh, it's not really detailed. It's, um, it's a little bit complex, but uh, application continue to rely on, on them. Uh, implementation details of CPython are, for, ex for example, the CIPI, as I said, but another good example is the garbage collector, because in uh, CPython we have um, a reference counter, uh, a garbage based on the uh, reference counting. It means that uh, when you release the latest reference to an object, it's destroyed immediately. But in uh, PyPy, they decided to use a more efficient garbage collector. And uh, the consequence is that your object may be destroyed later. You don't know when exactly. And uh, if you write your code, um, for example, if you open a file for reading, you put data in the file, and you forgot to close it uh, explicitly, the data may not be on the disk, depending when the destructor is called. So a good practice is to call, to call the close method or to use a context manager. But uh, there is still a lot of code in the wild which uh, is not, um, not written correctly. And uh, for, for your information, in Python, we now have a resource warning to detect that issue. Uh, to, to simplify the, the goal of my application uh, of the Fat Python project, is the idea is to replace a call to the length function computing the length of the string ABC and replace it with directly with the results, the number three. The goal looks quite simple, but I will explain why it's not as simple as you expect. Uh, the, the first um, block of point is that uh, everything in, in Python is mutable. Uh, when I say everything, it's just everything in the language. Uh, to give you some examples, the built-in function, like the land function, can, can be replaced at runtime. Uh, you can even modify the bytecode of a function at runtime, you obviously the value of global variables change uh, any, any time. There is no such thing like constant in the Python language. So you cannot rely on the value of a global variable because it can change any time. So you, you have to reload the value um, each time. Uh, to give you an example of uh, the, for the built-in function, you can uh, replace the length function at runtime. And uh, when you call it, instead of getting the length of the string, you get the string mock. And um, this example is maybe not very useful, but uh, it's very common in the unit test to use the mock module to, um, to reduce the complexity of a unit test and only test one specific function. Uh, Fat Python is not my first attempt to optimize C Python. Uh, in the past, I wrote uh, IST optimizer, which is a simple IST optimizer. I also wrote uh, register VM, which is a new um, implementation of the loop evaluating bytecode. 
instead of using a stack, I, I, use, a, I use registers, virtual registers, not CPU registers. And uh, both projects implemented uh, optimization like uh, replacing length uh, ABC with free. Uh, because of that, uh, I got a, a bad feedback on my project because uh, it changed the Python semantic. And the people uh, explained me deeply that they really want Python to remain uh, dynamic because they choose this language because it's dynamic and because you are able to replace everything at runtime. Uh, even if it looks uh, ugly uh, as a first look, uh, in some specific cases, it's very useful to to be able to, mute, to modify anything. So if you would like to write a new optimizer, uh, you, you have to respect some rules, some constraints. Uh, the first one is to not change the Python semantic. Uh, it's something really important for the Python community. Uh, obviously, you, you should not break application. It means that if you run the code using your optimizer, it should continue to work as it was uh, without the optimizer. And uh, a good property would be to not have to modify the source code because I don't want to write something like Numba to, um, which require to put some uh, decorators on function or do special stuff on the code. The idea is more to be able to optimize any kind of applications because I want to, be, to have a, the fastest language in the community. And I, um, I hope that if Python becomes faster, more people will use it. Okay, now I will uh, present you some, uh, some ideas to, um, to work, work around this uh, limitation and it, even if the respect the Python semantic but allow, allow us to uh, optimize the code. The uh, um, first thing is to, um, to, to implement the optimization, in fact, to implement efficient optimization which provides uh, visible uh, speed up on a real application and not only on a tiny micro benchmark. Uh, you have to make assumption on the code, and to um, to make assumption, a tool uh, is called the guards. Guards are basically a check made at runtime. And for example, um, a guard can be a check if the built-in length function was replaced or not uh, at runtime. A uh, very important, a very important feature of Python are the namespaces. Namespaces uh, are used like everywhere to store data. For example, in, in a module, the global variable uh, uh, is a namespace. In the function, the local variable uh, are stored in a namespace. In a class, uh, it's used for class variable, but also methods. Uh, for instance, uh, it's for the attributes of the object, etc. Um, uh, technically, a namespace in Python is a dictionary. And the, the technical challenge to, to write a guard on a namespace is to have a check which, which is faster than a dictionary lookup because you may not know, but a, a lookup in Python is very, is very fast. And uh, if you would like to avoid the, the lookup, the check must be even faster. So I propose a solution for that. It's a new pep to simply add a version to dictionaries. I will uh, detail the pep later. A uh, second tool to optimize the code is to specialize the code. Uh, the, the idea is to, to make some assumption in the code and uh, enable uh, optimization for this assumption. Uh, it's called the code specialization. Uh, and the, to, to be able to use a specialized code, you will have to check guards at runtime to decide if you use the specialized code or the regular bytecode. And uh, one, uh, one example of specialization if, is if you have a function with two parameters, x and y, and the two parameters are known to be, or um, usually to be integers, you can specialize the function to work, uh, to be optimized for integers, because uh, if you know that they are integers, you can enable a lot of different optimization which are not possible uh, in the common case, when you don't know types. And the pseudocode to, to call a function becomes, first you have to check the guards, and you pass the function parameters to implement guards on the type of uh, parameters. If the guards say everything is fine, nothing changed, you can use a specialized code. If something changed, you just fall back to the regular bytecode. 
uh, Python already has a, C Python already has an optimizer called the PayPal optimizer. The, the, it's a, an optimizer working on the bytecode. It implements only a simple optimization like constant folding, uh, dead code elimination, uh, and optimization on, on gems. Uh, the, um, the annoying point is that it's written in C, uh, and because it's written in C, it's not easy to extend it to, to implement new optimization. And moreover, uh, it has a very narrow view on the bytecode. You only see um, a few instructions before, maybe one or two instructions in advance. So you, you, cannot, you only have a very tiny knowledge of the code. For example, you don't know the whole function, and you don't know the whole module. So um, you are very limited in, in the kind of optimization that you can do. Uh, but Python provides something more interesting called AST. AST is abstract syntax tree. Uh, when, you, when Python compiles a, a Py file to bytecode, in fact, you have uh, intermediate steps. The first one is uh, tokenization to take letters and group them to tokens. And tokens are compiled to AST. AST is a high level um, uh, representation of uh, the code. So it contains all information, but uh, as a tree, which is very convenient to, to, to analyze, to process. And uh, it also has uh, types on nodes, so it's, um, uh, it's uh, even more easy to, to analyze it. And the IST is compiled to bytecode. Uh, at the bottom, I show you an example of uh, IST for the call land of the string ABC. So you can see that the, the call has a type call, so you, you can know directly that it's a call. It has two parameters, the function on, on arguments. The function in this case is um, we have to load the, the name uh, len from the global or from the built-in. And uh, there is one argument, which is a string, so you get the type uh, string and the content. Uh, to give you the most simple uh, IC optimizer, uh, to just to replace the call with the result, uh, you can use the uh, IST node, IST uh, module, which is part of the standard library. And, uh, e and uh, the module um, e has a, a visit method, and depending on the, the name of the method, you will enter a one node. So in this case, we replace it with the result. Uh, optimization. Um, so we, we have we have guards. We have uh, specialization. Uh, what we can do with that is that we can implement some optimization. So the, the following optimization are uh, already implemented in uh, the Fat Python project. Uh, the, um, for example, you, when you call a built-in function, you can replace it with the value. The, the idea is that instead of having to call it uh, each time, you, you directly get the constant, so it's, um, you don't have to compute the result every time. You can also simplify iterable. Uh, for example, replace a call to the range function with a tuple, because uh, later, if you combine multiple optimization, it becomes much more interesting to have a constant uh, as iterable. Um, and, uh, yes, um, when you optimize a built-in function, you need a guard on the replaced uh, built-in function. And, uh, on the range, uh, range you, have also, you also need a guard on the range function. Uh, another, another interesting optimization is uh, loop unwrapping. Uh, the, the idea is instead of paying the cost of the key, uh, four keyword, which has to create a, an iter object, first uh, take the first item, take the second item, uh, and continue until you get an exception. The idea is to duplicate the loop body enough time for each iteration and generate an assignment, uh, for example, x equal 1, x equal 2, x equal 3. And uh, this optimization al alone is not really interesting, but it uh, enables even more optimization uh, that we will see later. For example, um, a simple optimization is to copy constant, uh, because here you, you assign uh, the value 1 to the so variable x, so you have to store the value. Just after that, you have to reload the value because uh, Python is a stack-based um, VM, so you have to 
push pop values every time. So to, to avoid the, the reload from the variable, you can just uh, copy the value of the variable directly to the call. So instead of print x, you just call print one. Uh, constant folding is a set of uh, operations on uh, constant values, so integers, uh, strings, or tuple of uh, integers. Uh, to give you some example, if you ask for the positive value of five, it's just a number five. If you would like to check if one element is, e is in a list, in instead of creating the list at uh, runtime, you can um, uh, compile, uh, um, comp con convert it to a tuple which is um, only built once. You have also op um, operation on strings, uh, operation on some string, etc. And the latest one is uh, interesting because um, it's not a constant, it's a list. But even if it's a mutable list, you know that the result will always be the same, so you can replace uh, the rep operation directly with the value. Uh, something else is that you can um, you, you can avoid um, a load global instruction because um, when you call um, a built-in function like a LAN, you have to each time you have to reload the function from the from the global. You have to check in the global, and after that you have to check in the built-in because in fact the function is, is in, in built-in, so it requires two lookup. Uh, and this instruction uh, load global can, can be replaced with load constant. It means that you have to inject the built-in function in globals at runtime. And if you do that, you don't have, you avoid the lookup, uh, the two lookups. Uh, another simple change is to remove the date code. So for example, if you have uh, an, uh, a test, an if, with an if block and an else block, but the if block is empty, you can just invert the condition and uh, remove the if block. It's useful to avoid the jumps in the, the bytecode level. Uh, if you have a test and the test is known to all be, always be false, you can just remove the whole test. Uh, if you have a final um, instruction like uh, return, raise, or something else that uh, which is the, at the end of the control flow, you, you, can, you can just remove what is after the, the final instruction. Okay, now about the implementation. The good news is that uh, I already got uh, changes merged in the code. Uh, the first one is a new type of uh, IST, uh, which is constant. Uh, it does simplify the, the optimizer, because uh, instead of having to check each time if the type is, um, for example, name, constant, num, uh, string, or bytes, you have a single type, so it makes the check uh, easier. But moreover, if you have a tuple of uh, constant object or a tuple of tuple of constant object, you can replace it once, and after that, uh, in the optimizer, you only have to one test. Uh, another change which was merged in Python 3.6 is to support um, uh, negative line number delta. Uh, because in Python, we don't store directly the line number to, to each instruction because uh, it would uh, cost too much memory and it's not efficient. So we, we store a compressed table uh, mapping uh, instruction offsets to line numbers. And uh, when you implement optimization like uh, loop unrolling, the line numbers uh, goes backward sometimes. So the because we don't store the line number directly, we, but we store a delta. So my change just allow to store negative line number to, to have a line number which goes backward. Uh, and the latest change is to, to support directly tuple on a frozen set constant in the compiler, uh, because uh, this optimization already exists in the byte um, people optimizer, but it is uh, implemented in the, um, on the bytecode and not on IST. And I would like to implement the same optimization but at IST level. So with my change, you can generate directly a constant tuple of frozen sets. OK, now I represent you uh, three PEPs, which are um, uh, written to merge my work into uh, CPython. 
the first one is to add a new version to the diction to the dictionary. Uh, the field is uh, private; is not uh, visible at the Python level, only at the C level. Uh, the property is that the version is increased at uh, every change, uh, and the version is unique for all dictionaries. And um, with um, the, the second property, unique for all dictionaries, means that you not only you you know if something changed, but you also know if you are you still uh, you are still using the same dictionary, because technically, in some kind in some cases, you can replace the namespace of a module of of a um, class or something else, and I would like to make sure that the, the namespace is still the same. And using the, the version, you can implement a guard on the namespace uh, you, uh, because uh, if the, on the common case, if nothing changed, you just have to compare the version and you avoid the lookup. To give you an example of, the, of guard, you, you get the version of the dictionary. If the version is exactly the same, you avoid the lookup, uh, you are done. Otherwise, you, you look up for the, your key if the key is still the same, it means that something else changed. It, it doesn't matter in our uh, use case. So we store the new value, and we are done. And otherwise, it means that the value changed. But in Python, uh, if you if you look at the built-in function or the class method, it's very very rare uh, to modify something in the namespace. So the, the, the hope, the expectation is that you always go to the fast pass. The second pep is a pep to specialize function. Uh, it adds a new C function to the C API called the pi function specialize. You, you can use it to register a new specialized code uh, using guards. It means that if the guards are true, you call the specialized uh, code. And I modified the C eval dot C uh, file, which is uh, the most important loop in Python. It's a loop which evaluates the bytecode. So the, the change uh, check guards, and depending on the result of the guards, you choose uh, which code should be executed. And uh, not only you can um, generate a, a bytecode, but you can also uh, call uh, any uh, kind of uh, callable uh, function. And um, you can generate uh, specialized codes uh, using any any tool. In my case, I'm using a fat optimizer which works on the IST. But you can also imagine you, that you use a Cyton to generate machine code. You can uh, use Python to generate a very optimized C++ code. Or maybe you can uh, also use the pep in Numba to to specialize code, but to keep the Python semantic. Um, to, to give you an example of specialization, uh, instead of calling the built-in function to generate a character, you can just replace the, the call with the value. And when you specialize the function, you pass a guard on the built-in function. And the last uh, pep is a pep to, for code transformers. Uh, this pep adds a new command line option dash O. It adds a new function called uh, sys dot, um, dot set code transformers. Uh, a code transformer can work at the bytecode level, but it also works on the IST level. Uh, for example, uh, with my pep, the people optimizer becomes a, a code transformer. So it's, um, it, it becomes part of the, the same uh, process, and you can even disable the PayPal optimizer if you want, or use your own optim uh, implementation, which may implement more uh, changes, more optimization. And the question, if it will um, happen for Python 3.6, uh, uh, first I got, uh, got good feedback on my free peps, on, on the project in general. But the blocker point is that people are asking me, ask me, asking me to show concrete uh, speed up on application, and not only on a micro benchmark. And um, sadly, uh, to be honest, today it's only faster on a micro benchmark because I spend a lot of time just to implement uh, guards, to implement uh, specialization, to modify the compiler, to to support IST optimizer. 
uh, and fix uh, some bugs. So I did not have much time to implement uh, amazing optimization. It's more the foundation of the project. And in my opinion, I need at least uh, three months to implement more optimization to, to have something visible on uh, applications. And uh, what's coming next? Uh, so I say that we can implement more optimization. So here are just some ideas. When you unroll a loop, when you, you, you get this, this code which looks inefficient because you assigned a variable, uh, x equal one, x equal two, x equal three, but the x variable is no more used. So in this case, you can just remove the x variable because it's no more used. Uh, another example is to copy the global because uh, if you know uh, or if you check that the global will not change, instead of having to call the, to load the global uh, each time is a function, you can just um, uh, copy it in the function body and uh, implement more optimization like uh, constant folding. And uh, as usual, you need a guard on uh, the keys global. Another important uh, optimization is a function inlining because in Python the inlining has a um, important uh, function call as an important cost. So instead of uh, calling the function, uh, the, the idea is to copy the function body where you call the function. And is that in this case, you can, um, uh, if you combine it with other optimization, you can produce much more efficient code. And uh, obviously, you need a guard on the inline function because if the function is modified somehow, you still have to call the original modified function. Uh, another larger project is to implement uh, profiling. The um, this step usually is done uh, at once in the JIT compiler. JIT compiler first uh, profiles the code while the code is running. And depending on some threshold and some triggers, you can uh, emit machine code. Uh, um, but I don't feel able to work uh, to implement such thing at runtime because it's really complex. Uh, PyPy guys uh, took many years to, pro to to implement something efficient. So my idea is to to run the profiler first on a um, known workload. For example, uh, run unit test. So you asked me to stop, but I heard that I have 45 minutes. Uh, do you know? Okay. Um, okay, just to finish uh, quickly, uh, I have a new perf module, which is a module to implement uh, benchmarks. And uh, the idea is to spawn multiple processes and compute the average, because if you run a single process, uh, you, you, you only get um, one specific performance. But if you run it multiple times, you, you, you get a better uh, realistic uh, value. And it's, more, it's, it's very efficient to, to get more stable uh, benchmark. And uh, you can also store all data as a JSON. And, uh, because of, and thanks to that, you can display, compare, and analyze data after, afterwards. So it's, um, it's a library, and I already modified the CPython benchmark suite to, to use it. So we will get much more stable benchmark. OK, here I am. Do you have any question? We've got time for maybe two questions. Um, and do you have one there? Hi, thank you for the call, uh, the talk. Um, what I wanted to ask you is, you said that when you, you modified C of all to see if the guards are valid and yes. then go into the function, uh, what uh, kind of broke a cycle that was a function uh, JIT? was because it's not only when you get into the function you have to check the guards. You mostly have to check every time you call other functions, you call the evil mm -hmm. or even some other things because built-ins could have changed yeah. Uh, and yeah, values and a ton of other stuff. How do you deal with that? 
Uh, with fat Python, you, you get uh, guards which are checked at the entry points, but when you specialize the code, uh, you, you can inject your own uh, guards inside the code, so you are free to generate um, guards inside the function body to, to decide inside the function body if you take a fast pass for one line or, or fall back to the regular code. Then I have a follow-up, which is why then modify CEVAL? Why don't you check the guards inside of the specialized and then bail out of it? It's just a, a decision, right? Uh, and it's fine. So for technical reason, uh, it's uh, more easy to, to do it uh, like that. Okay. Thank you. All right, I think that's it. Thank you very much, Victor. That was excellent. Thank you.